miserable Monday following a uh, miserable Sunday during a game where, in my opinion, another game we should have won. What an amazingly painful season this is. Welcome. Welcome aboard Green Bean Jets pod. I am Green Bean. And, uh, you know, it gets increasingly difficult, my good friends, to uh, to talk about this crap. You know, it's like, um, how many times can you tell the story of when she broke your heart? You know, at some point you're like, I, I just don't want to talk about her anymore. You know what I mean? That's what it, that's what it gets, that's what you get to. You get to the point, you're like, I don't want to talk about if If nothing changes, nothing changes, right? And uh, it's a crazy thing with this... Um, with this team because you know obviously monday morning quarterbacking there's a term for it because uh, so many people do it and it's obviously easier to do than it is to manage everything in real time the actual decisions and all that i don't think that's uh you know the question right we're not saying that it's you know easy to do one thing or another but boy oh boy it is probably easy to not do as many stupid things as the Jets do year in, year out. Faces change, names change, uh, schedules change, coaches, GMs, quarterbacks, whoever. And it's the same. It's the same stuff. And it's painful. And, I, and I've said this before. I, I maintain this. I believe that you guys deserve better. Uh, dare I say I deserve better, damn it. You know all the time we put in, right? So the Jets are now 2-6, and six, everybody. 2-6 and six Jets, welcome aboard. We're going to have some, uh, some, some fun talking about this crap today. Before we get started, I would like to remind you about the great BetUS. BetUS, America's favorite sports book, still offering one of the best offers that you'll find out there. All you got to do is go to BetUS.com, use the promo code YouTube150, and they will give you a 150% bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000. But not only that, you will also get a 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000. If you're going to take your shot, you might as well get the amazing deal. With the one and only bet US. Uh, again, I didn't do so good. I got to stop betting on the Jets. That's what it is. I can't bet on the Jets, the most unpredictable team in the world. But I do thank Bet US for hanging out with us and enduring this pain with us right alongside. Uh, again, thank you to Bet US for sponsoring Green Beans Jets Pod. Now, guys, uh, we're two and six. At one point, we were two and one. So that means. Five straight losses. Now think about this. If the field goal kicker would have just made the kicks that went up, and not we're not talking about 58 yarders here. You know, 40s, 30s, 20s. If we just made the kicks that went up, we're a five-win team. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Now it doesn't take away you know, the glaring holes on defense and the injuries and uh, some of the confusion and ineptitude on the offensive side of the ball. But it definitely would feel a lot better. Hmm? Can we say that? Five wins? If right now for five and three instead of two and six, don't you feel a little bit better? I mean, the Ravens are five and three. Shit. I'm good with five and three. We can still work on the other things while we're figuring it out from five and three. Figuring it out from two and six when really, objectively speaking, you can really only lose one more game, maybe two if you have playoff hope. So here we are. We have a week until the trade deadline is up. And we were just buyers. I mean, we just traded for Devontae Adams, who had himself a few catches and drew a pass interference. So his impact is there. Maybe not what we were expecting to see, but I think if you look at it through another lens, which is Garrett Wilson is popping off, that could be the Devontae Adams effect as well. So it's there. But we were just buyers. 
trying to salvage the season. Fired Sala, traded for Devontae Adams. We saw Hassan Reddick get re-signed in his first action this week. So it made sense. But with one more loss, really, you could argue two for the rest of the season. Nine games left. You can only lose one or two and have any chance of the playoffs. Do you start to consider? I mean, clearly, Jeff Ulbricht is not it. Nothing against the man. He's a solid defensive coordinator, and we like Jeff Ulbricht plenty, I'm sure. But he don't know what he's doing as a head coach. I mean, do you you forego the opportunity to start over because of Jeff Ulbricht? I don't think you do. I mean, how about Aaron Rodgers? I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he's dude, he's on pace for a 4,000-yard season. He had, what, 200 and let me, let me check here. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had 233 yards and two touchdowns today. Uh, you know, I mean, he's not terrible. He doesn't look like the Aaron Rodgers that we all wanted, expected, hoped to see. But uh, let's shoot straight. He don't look like the guy that's taking us anywhere, right? Is that fair? He looks indecisive. He looks hesitant. He looks like he just might be a little bit nervous back there with the inconsistencies on the offensive line. And they played well against the Patriots overall. But is it is he enough to say, okay, we're going to run this back? I don't think so. The team's quitting. So here we are. you got a lot of thinking to do. Let's go through this and see exactly what we got to think about. Now, we talked a little bit about this uh, in the live reaction in Game uh, game Stream with uh, Frankie from Flatbush and Jets Chaos and myself. Really, the, the biggest decision right now, Jets fans, we have really one decision to make right now. One. Because any other decisions you make are just muddying the water that much further if you don't make this one. The decision is, what are you doing with Joe Douglas? Is he, like, is he going to be extended? Does he want to be extended? Does he want to be here anymore? Because I don't know. We haven't heard a peep from him, and they're some of the biggest moves we've made in a long time. Devontae Adams, Reddick contract, uh, firing the head coach, and we haven't heard a peep from him. So we don't know what's going on with him. Woody is out front, so he said, these are my decisions, I'm making the decisions, blah, 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 blah. Joe Douglas, who, again, we've talked about this, comes from st- from serious stock, man. He's an Ozzie Newsom protege, clearly knows what he's doing, hasn't worked out on the field, but he might be thinking, dude, I'm done with this place. So you got to know, am I trying to retain Joe Douglas? Am I extending him? Is this the guy that I'm going to task with the next phase, or am I going at it fresh? That needs to be taken care of right now. If you're going to be a buyer or a seller, trade. I mean, what are you going to let them? Are you going to trade Sauce or Michael Clemens or Mike Williams? Are you going to trade these guys for who? Is he going to make trades for the next guy? You see what I'm saying? Or not keep them when you could have traded them for the next guy if you wanted to? So you need to make that needs to be done right now. If you're going to keep Joe Douglas, you extend Joe Douglas right now and you let everybody know it doesn't matter what the press feels, thinks, fans, nothing. You make your decision. Joe Douglas is my guy. I've extended him four years or two years or whatever it is or not. That's got to be done. Now, what do you think should be done with that? You think? Look at his record, right? We get reminded all the time. He's like the most losing record, you know, the losingest uh, general manager in, in the NFL. You you can make the case that he put all this hope and faith in a bunch of old heads, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Tyron Smith leading the pack with that batch. You know, his young guys, not enough, too little, too late. I don't know. Did Zach Wilson pick Robert Sala? I mean, I don't know. You can make a case for either side, really. I mean, clearly the NFL thought we we were on to something because they put us on seven primetime games. All right, so clearly he was doing something. Everybody recognized was good. You know? So I don't know. That needs to be decided right now. Now, if it's me, if it's me, I'm having a serious discussion and saying, look, man, here's where we are. I know we get feelings for these guys and you want to help and you're loyal and all. The loyalty thing has got to go out the window. 
because we're clearly loyal to guys that are not paying dividends. Greg Zerline way up top today. You got to have that conversation. Who are we thinking for the replacement? This is this entire staff has to go. Who are we thinking about? What are we doing? When does the you know when does this start? Do we start even talking to guys now? Look, we're just having interim coach. You're the guy we want. Get it done now. Just get it done. So for me, I'm having that hard discussion if I'm going to keep him. To be honest with you, I don't know who's going to do a better job than Joe Douglas, but I would probably, I would probably clean the entire house. That's what I would do, and that's just me thinking today. But if I'm if I'm in charge. I'm saying, you know what, we just got to now. That doesn't mean every player. I'm going to evaluate everybody. But as far as the leadership, the team does not play for the for this leadership. They don't. They give up. They quit. The fundamentals aren't there. The passion isn't there. We start slow every week. Whatever is going on there, it needs to go. I'm cleaning house, and I want fresh eyes on the talent in this organization. I want fresh eyes on all of our systems, on our scouting personnel, pro player personnel. We do not do very well with our free agents overall. So we have some decisions to make. Now, it's real easy to be doom and gloom right now. I mean, it's, it's gloomy. People say, why do you got to be so negative and everything? I mean, there's very little positive going on. Yes, you can hang your hat on some plays. Garrett Wilson's looking good couple hundred yard games in the, in a row he's really he's looking good he's on pace for like a 12 1300 yard season that's great Brees looks like he's you know he's doing some good things the offensive line is settling down I mean there's individual things you can look at but overall the team these are games we should be winning you look at the Denver game should have won that game you look at the Patriots game, should have won that game. Look at the Steelers game. There's no reason that we lost that game. We completely folded. Completely and utterly gave up. The Vikings game was very close. Could have won it. The Buffalo game, again, missed field goals. I think it's really time. Like You can't wait till the end of the season. Look, you already fired the coach. You already you know, overturned the apple cart, so to speak. You got to make the tough big boy decisions right now. Wherever Woody is, he's got to sit down with Joe Douglas and make that decision. If it's not Joe Douglas, then it's not Joe Douglas. And you say, okay, we're moving on. And you start looking around. Who's going to help Woody do it? That's the scary part about it. When you think about getting rid of Joe Douglas, who, who's going to find you a GM? Who is it? Woody? Is, does Woody feel like he knows enough now? I, I don't know. Well, you look around the NFL and they tell you about all these two and five teams that have made the playoffs. Those two and five teams... They didn't have the systemic breakdowns that we have. Yes, we're going to take a hard look at it, Jeff Ulbricht. You know, I mean, well, I don't know what we expect them to say. I don't fault the coaches for saying the same stuff like the coach speak. There's nothing. They haven't looked at the film. They, I mean, you know, they, 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 what are they going to say? Jo, Jeff Ulbricht was asked this week if he regretted starting Zerline. He said no. Of course he's going to say, what is he going to throw him under the bus? But maybe he should. We were talking about this. Gerard Mayo came out last week and said, my team is soft. My team played soft. And look how they played. I said it from the first couple of plays. They look like there's more intensity than us. They look more aggressive than us. And we still had that game. I never felt like we weren't winning that game until we lost it. That's how I felt the whole game. Like, we got this. Now, I'd like to see us play better so we can go into the Texans game and feel better about it, but I never thought we were losing the game. It's a weird show right now because I am not one who's lost for words very often. I'm really not. But I feel like I'm talked out with this team. This one hurts so much more because we really believed you have a Hall of Fame quarterback. You got talent all over the place. Big names strewn about. The top three defense from a year, you know, last couple of years. Sure, you made some defensive lines, you know, changes. But by and large, if Reddick was here, you should have. It was all planned. It was all that we should have. We were supposed to make some noise. And then it, all of a sudden, it comes down to one of your most reliable players, Greg the Leg. And he's he's washed. So do you fire Greg Zerline today? Who's your replacement? I mean, I think you gotta. 
You gotta. You cannot depend on them. So what do you do from there? You had guys in last week, and we're going to start that whole thing. This is the scrap heap. You're getting guys that are still out there for a reason. But they can't miss 25 yarders like he is right now. 32 yarders, whatever it might be. (sighs) So how do we feel? Are you ready to blow it up? I have to be honest. I don't want to be. I don't want to be ready to blow it up. I don't want to trade the guys that just a few months ago I was hanging my hat on and confident that they were going to be part of the taking us over the mountain. But you have to think like this. You have to think if a new GM comes in, if a new head coach comes in, what guys on this team are of of value? Do you lock up a guy like Sauce Gardner? You know, next year, Sauce, G-Dubs, they're going to be talking about contracts. And believe me, I'm not trying to say that Sauce Gardner isn't somebody to build around or anything like that. I mean, he's, have, he's having an interesting season. But is that somebody that maybe another staff wouldn't want? I don't know. So this is a tough time because the season's only halfway done and we're already calling it quits. Do you tank? Do you sit A-Rod? I mean, is playing A-Rod the best ju- thing to do to tank? I don't know. I really don't know at this point. I mean, if it was my decision, I would know real quick what I wanted to do. But even if we tank, we're not, I mean, are we getting the first overall pick? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going on. So it's a tough, it's a tough one, everybody. It's a tough one. First thing you got to do is you got to figure out the Joe Douglas situation. You have to decide if he's your GM and you got to get off. You got to, you know, you got to have some balls, some gumption, make a decision and do it now. So you know what you're doing. Who are you working with moving forward? What are we trying to accomplish? What message are we sending to people that you want to bring in? Because again, if, if the decision isn't already understood that Jeff Ulbrich just isn't ready to be a head coach yet, then I don't know. If you're still trying to evaluate and just drag this thing out and and see where you are at the end of the year, then I guess they'll do that. But what happens with that is the Jets will win five or six games and be at pick eight, nine, you know what I mean? And it just doesn't get the job done. And then you're mediocre again. You're you're not able to get the guys that can change the franchise, the Jaden Daniels of the world, you know? Caleb watching that game. It's exciting. It's fun. Young, up-and-coming teams. Bursts of energy and passion. And what do we get? We're tired, old, and giving up all day. We're going to be talking about this all week. Reddick looked okay. Quinnen had a couple sacks. But this is, you know, I think more indicative of the team that we were playing. We should have beaten them because Quinnen didn't look all that good to me. They look slow and tired. The whole team. Looks old, slow, tired, unenthused, uninspired. And there's not much you can do with that. Because if you're the guy that's been leading them to this and the precedent has been set, that accountability is not the thing. You can't just start holding people accountable because now we get resentments and everything else. Oh, accountability. Remember, that was the big word of the, of the day. Remember a couple weeks there, accountability, accountability, accountability. Not one player has been held accountable since we were, were talking like that. Not one. Not Gibson, who came shot out of a cannon today, I think because Cor- Corley was active. That's what I think. Corley was active today, so all of a sudden, Gippy looks like he's on fire, running around, doing crazy things, catches a touchdown, great returns. Where was that guy? Now you want to believe, oh, this is the beginning of, I don't know. No one was held accountable. The kicker is still missing kicks. We're losing games because of it. You know, there's guys missing blocks. Getting, I mean, how many how many roughing the passers and, and missed sacks is Michael Clemens going to have to uh, show you before you say, hey, this guy sucks. This guy's not, I can't have him on the field. Stick Braden McGregor out there. He'll play with passion for you the whole time. Stick Eric Watts out there. Guy looks like he's always he looks fired up 100% of the time. Do something like that. Hold someone accountable. 
No one. It's been a five-game losing streak, and nobody's been benched. Nobody. Nobody has been benched. What does that tell you? So now when you pick one guy, you go, hey, we're going to bench. You go, what about the other guy? Blah, 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 blah. This all started with Zach last year, the last couple years. If you're going to allow somebody to go out there and, the whole, and, and undermine what the whole team is doing consistently, that's it. You've pulled the rug out from under your own feet, and it's a wrap. And that's where we are, sad to say. It's the saddest damn thing I've ever seen. And now we're going to have to watch on Thursday Night Football, and guess what? I'll be rooting. I'll be hoping for the turnaround. I will. I know it. But is it likely? Is it done? Are we watching the end? Clean. If it is, just clean it. Clean the whole thing. Make your decision now. What's going on? Maybe you want to give it one more week till Halloween. Play. We're playing the Texans on Halloween, guys. If we don't beat them, there's a lot of changes coming to this organization. You just sit down and you say that. You walk into the meeting room and you say, look, you got one more game to prove it. If not, there's going to be big changes. Bitch and moan all you want. I really don't care. You guys are on the field. I'm watching you miss tackles. I'm watching you drop passes. I'm watching you hold. I'm watching you hit the quarterback late. I'm watching it over and over and over again. One more week, Thursday night, Halloween. We're wearing our all blacks. You don't do it then, and it's over. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. This one's tough. This one's tough. I had plans to go through the box score with you. I had plans to go through the intelligent gripe and talk about accountability, each individual player. I can't even do it. I can't muster it up. I can't muster it up. Tomorrow's a new day. We'll see how we feel. With that all said, I want to thank BetUS for sponsoring the show. I want to thank you guys for sticking with it. And look, again, you deserve better. You deserve better. I wish I had some control so I can give you something better. I would. I would give you something better, guys. Have a great week. And as always, fucking go Jets. Go Jets.